We have 65 million users worldwide. Everyone deserves privacy. Everyone deserves a quality experience browsing the internet. A large part of the reason why Brave is so popular is the idea of being paid for your attention. It's a new dynamic. It's a new paradigm, really, and it's only available with crypto. We have some of the only team members in the world that have built and brought three browsers to market. Netscape, Mozilla, Firefox, and now Brave. You can't onboard the next billion people without even a dollar transaction. It just doesn't work. You need something as cost effective and fast as Solana. Brave is the default crypto browser of the crypto community. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Next Billion podcast where we're talking to the builders, the entrepreneurs, the awesome peeps, and we're here with one of my friends who's an OG Solana guy. And this is this is Carlos from Brave. Carlos, what's going on, man? Great to have George, you on the podcast today. It's 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 always good to see you, man. Like you're one of the first people I look for at Breakpoint when I'm wandering around. Like just you know, you're always there. So, you know, it's great to connect here. It was it's always a pleasure. Oh, always a pleasure. And look, maybe we can start off with, I guess, what's been your crypto journey so far and maybe set the scene about how you got involved in Solana. Because just off camera, we we're talking about all of the serendipitous uh, yeah. you know, occasions that, that you got involved in this kind of stuff. But um, how, how did you how did you come to, to be the senior director of uh, all of the Web3 awesome coolness going on at Brave with Solana? <laughs> serendipitous is a good word. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite words. So that, that's, again, like the, we're like, we're eye to eye on this. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I've actually been in crypto, you know, in professional capacity only since around 2019, but as a user since 2014. I didn't do too well, which is why I'm still working. Um, I had <laughs> a bunch of Dogecoin. I gave up for serious projects, but went mega though. Like you, you should be sitting on a on a giant mountain full of gold, like smog or something. Like <laughs> you, you, you would think so, right? Uh, is actually this plays into my the reason why I love Bonk so much because so I sold millions of millions of Dogecoin in 2016 yeah. for Bitcoin and Ethereum because they were more serious, right? Right. Wrong call. <laughs> the most serious thing. I have, there's like five generational wealth things that I've messed up in crypto, which I know we all have, but that's yeah, like the one that like my wife my wife is mad at me about it. Like she's she's like she'll let everything slide with this one. She's she's like I mean she's from Costa Rica, she's like idiota. <laughs> you know, but you, you don't know, and that's why like it's crypto is whimsical, right? And so like what if if we kind of apply and this is why all the FUD, like if you just, you guys are thinking too seriously, you need to understand what this is first. And then, you know, just the bottom line is like the best times I've had is having fun. Right. And so I guess for Solana, like independent of Brave, you know, I got my position at Brave. I was originally on the ads team and, you know, on Brave ads. And I got into Solana because we were having a lot of traction with crypto users. And Brave is the pretty much, I would say it's fair to say, the default crypto browser of the crypto yeah. community. And I believe that comes off of the strength of our token sale in 2017 when BAT premiered. And and I was part of that. I, I didn't get the BAT at the time, but I was there and I, I realized I used to, you know, so we used Brave and Brave has evolved. And it's a, you know, really, it's a, it's a good experience. It's a good browser. So it makes sense that people use it. But, you know, one thing about Web3 and crypto is that it's all about tinkering. And I remember, so if this was, man, so what this would have been the summer of 20, maybe? Well, anyway, I was tinkering around with something on, on Ethereum. And, like, I went through a smart contract and the three transactions cost me, like, $80. And, you know, I hadn't really gotten to the point yet where I was using Binance Smart Chain or the other thing. It wasn't there. It wasn't so clear yet about different wallets moving. So I had learned about Solana. And so I was like, okay, this is doing the same stuff as Ethereum, but cheaper, more efficient, looks cool. And let me try it out. And so I downloaded Phantom, great, like really smooth. Like even back then it was a great product. You know, it's, uh, you know, give credit where it's due. So I used it and I remember I, you know, I live in New York. So unfortunately the crypto user, I'm limited to like Gemini and Coinbase. Luckily, Sol was on both of those. And I was able to buy Sol. And then what I wanted to experiment with was NFTs. Yep. And so I was minting NFTs. And so I don't, I don't remember how I got into it, but degenerate apes were going to mint. Yep. Right. Shout out to Nikki. Nikki, I know Nikki quite well now. He's I remember a that guy. <laughs> yeah. And it was crazy. Right. And so like, I remember like sitting there and it was supposed to happen and then it didn't. 
But I love the vibe. They were like, of course, we're going to mess up because we're horrible. Right. And then they're like, I think you messaged me around that time of the (laughs) mint or something. There's something there because I think it was you and we were talking about it because the mint didn't go down properly. And I was like, oh, was it a rug? Was it not? Don't know. Like, yeah. It it was was this Mac computer that you had to like enter a password in, like the vision of a Mac computer. And then the next, and so it didn't go, something broke as usual with mints, right? So then they said that, and I remember this was a Friday and this is like one of those situations where, you know, my wife will be bothered because I'm like huddled next to my computer at a random time. And I'm just like, I'm watching the mint happen and I'm like, just leave me alone. (laughs) Right. Uh, And so the mint didn't happen. And if I remember, it was like a Friday, I believe. And they said it was going to happen then on Sunday. Right. So I know it was summer because my wife, we, we drove down to the Jersey Shore with my kid and we were like, you know, going to the beach for the day. On our way back, and again, serendipitous, bro. This is where yeah. this is where destiny walks in, in the form <laughs> of my son having to go pee. Right, okay. so uh, we're about ten miles from my house, and my son is like, "I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom." And so we passing by a rest stop in Jersey. It's called the James Gandolfini rest stop after the Sopranos actor. Um, nice. And I was like, "Can you wait?" He's like, "No, no." And so we rush in, and of course, what do you do now? You take out your phone. So I take out my phone, I check Discord, and these guys are like, mints happening in 20 minutes. Dude, I grabbed my, like, go to the bathroom, I put them in the car, I sped. <laughs> you the speed or you like double down in the diner and you're like, hey, we're yeah. going to order something right here. And No, it was just, this is it. And I was like, this is happening. And so I went back and I minted two apes and like, I was like, it costs nothing other than the mint. And I remember how much it cost. And it wasn't nothing. Like at that point, it wasn't, I think Seoul was maybe at $30 at that point, 35. It was, Seoul was just getting momentum. You know, I believe the mint, like both of them was like around $400 in total USD. But either way, I managed to do that. And then from there, I just kind of like, I got in and I got in and I just started yeah. to mess around Discord, learning about different projects. I remember looking at that old Solana ecosystem map they had on the website and just going through and learning and meeting a bunch of people. And then, you know, other NFT projects that I got involved with before, even before SMB, like I got an SMB late, but Grim Syndicate, which was uh, my buddy Crypto Lothar. He's like the co-founder of that. And I, I became super tight with him after, but he got into that community. And I just really fell in love with the vibe and the Solana community. Like there was something about it that was fresh. It was something about it that was, you know, it was friendly. And this is, of course, was a bull market. Everybody was happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And so like everything I wanted to learn about Web3, I could, I knew I could do on Solana. And so, you know, I met the Jupiter guys early on. Like I met, I remember I went to a meetup in New York City. It was prior to Breakpoint. And this is when, dude, I had like used Mango, Solet wallet to like bridge ETH over to Mango. I love Solet. Like people yeah. hate on me. They're like, oh, you, you use Solid back in the day. Like what an idiot. But I'm like, man, it, it just worked. It's all right. (laughs) No frills. It worked. But in addition to that, another thing, if you remember the wormhole exploit, Mm. my wrapped ETH, and I had not a little bit, Mm. was Solet ETH, which was unaffected. So yeah, that because it was bridged. They had their own bridge, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it was, so I was like, don't be wrong. I still bridged back to ETH after the fact because I was like, okay, this is, this is like, I had some Bitcoin on there too that I had used because I was messing around. Again, uh, but still, it was like, I remember that wallet and it was, uh, that was one of the things I did. And so I, at a meetup, I met the Orca people early on, James over from Jet Protocol and his co-founder, his name escapes me now, but they're, you know, all Nicker Dow people, Ben from Jupiter, like all these people, like, yeah. so I met all these people that were like, we're just chilling. It was more, it was in professional capacity for Brave, but it was also more in my personal interest. And I guess that's like why it works. And so that was prior to the first break point. And so, again, this is like one of those things where I was working in Solana. I was like, this is going to be the next big. I was telling everybody I knew. I was like, I sat with some friends of mine. I'm like, guess Solana. This is when it went from like 30 to like 90 in like a weekend. Yeah. And then I bought my tickets to Breakpoint. I booked all stuff for Lisbon. Unbeknownst to me, they were conversations happening high level with Brave and Solana Foundation to get Solana the Brave wallet. And so I found out about it maybe a couple weeks before. And so when I went to Breakpoint, it was myself, my close colleague and friend, Luke Mulks, who's our VP of operations. And we were there and then Brendan was there. And then like, I got to be like in the audience when Brendan was on stage with Anatoly talking about 
how we're going to work together. And I was taking yeah. pictures of it. And, and that was, that was cool. It was a great, like it worked out and I've been had the luck to go to every break point since I plan to go to the next one too. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, the journey there, one of the things you mentioned as well was like the fees were quite a clear difference with Solana. And you know, this is something that only now, I guess it's bull market vibes again, but people are like, oh yeah, actually the fees kind of matter because I can degen on Solana and it's quick and fast and cheap. And it's like, bro, we've been saying that for like three years. But I think you've I, been saying that you're my favorite guy on Twitter, by the way. You have been saying, dude, prior, you were the one who came prior to Mert. You were like the guy who would come out and just like drop, drop the mic on people, you know, the, the, the shit post. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I try and I try and keep that up. But I think like a lot of people are, are seeing that again with Solana and the fact that hey, bull markets, a lot more people come in and so on, but it's fun. And it's fun when you, you're not sort of thinking of, man, do I have to, you know, $80 or something to be able to get into this mint and I can just go and do it and it's, it's super fast and quick. And I guess that user experience is what people expect, right? And, you know, you mentioned coming from, say, MetaMask or to other wallets and, hey, the user experience was better as well. So it's like, it's fees, it's user experience, it's a cool community you got involved in. So I guess the next step in that journey is maybe a little bit about what Brave's doing or, or the end goal for Brave and like with the wallet and, you know, the, the creators that you guys have got and BAT the token and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But like, I think for everyone watching this, you probably are using Brave already right now. Like if you're not, like you should be because it's literally the best browser. Um, not just saying that, literally I've been using Brave for I don't know how many years, but just the best one. It's <laughs> But we all know Brave the browser, right? And, you know, browsers are browsers. They're meant to be your window to the internet. But what's the deal behind the wallet and the thinking and the strategy there? And, and maybe why Solana as well? Does that fit into the Brave plan? You know, multi-chain, like Brave is chain agnostic, right? And that's first and foremost that we have to be, right? Because Brave, and this is not just the wallet, but the browser, everything, you know, really follows a certain ethos, right? The first of which we all, we're all known for privacy, right? And yep. so Brave wouldn't be a widely used browser if the experience wasn't superior, right? So something very practical like YouTube without ads, like that, just using Brave browser, right? So again, like just known thing I like, do you want to use YouTube without ads? Use Brave. On mobile, you have the ability to, to cash a playlist of YouTube videos offline. So if you go on a trip and you want to get some YouTube videos there without paying premium, you can do that. Oh, but, really? I didn't know that. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on mobile. So like, for example, one way I've used it also, not only on planes, but um, we did a karaoke party like at a place for my kid. And like, I just went through YouTube and like I put a playlist of a bunch of karaoke songs offline and it worked. I mean, that's, and so like, that's why, so, you know, while we have a really, I think, special place in the Web3 community, our company is really focused on two main things, which, which is privacy and the second which is user choice, right? So our users are first and foremost what we focus on. And that really bled into the idea like, okay, we began a crypto wallet, um, which began as a fork of MetaMask, yeah. like the last iteration. But then we tore that down completely. And under James, you know, our VP of Web3, James Mudgett, rebuilt the wallet and it's a multi-chain wallet. So like now it's it's all... You know, MetaMask has added Solana and they're adding snaps, like everything else. And there, you know, there are some issues with some of those things. And um, Phantom has added um, Ethereum. Like we've been a uh, multi-chain web through all with Ethereum and Solana for, you know, a year already, like years. Like this has been, it's not new. And why? Right. Well, because like web three is going to develop, right? This ecosystem is going to keep surprising us. You know, like who would have predicted ordinals, for example, we want to make sure that users have access to all of what web three has to offer in one safe private place. Yep. Right. That's really like what drives. And, you know, again, as I said, like I wasn't privy to the conversation that began with Brave and Solana and those like that was a higher level than me. But, you know, I'm going to assume that part of that was, you know, the same token, having the ability for users of, like I can try this, I can use this, you know, you have the ability to do both. You can do both. We're all, you know, we're all multi hand do things. And so with Bat and Solana, like, you know, the <laughs> where we talked about the previous break point, the last one at Lisbon, um, I left a day early because I had to go down to Argentina for La Bitconf, which is a huge, um, a very old, established OG crypto conference in Latin America. I speak Spanish and not many people in Brave speak Spanish. So I'm like the de facto kind of head of like Spanish outreach. I'm like, the damn. guy who gets on a plane. Yeah. I'm a guy who gets on a plane <laughs> to, to go, you know, say hola, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and speak. 
And so I was there and I, it coincided that day, which happened to be the day that everything happened with Sam, like that came out. Um, we did an NFT mint on Solana and a collaboration at a Mape and we minted out. And so I, if I remember correctly, there was like a different, there was a tiered whitelist where like Adam Ape holders had a tier and then there was a tier with you can mint with that. And then it was finally like the last year. So that's how it works. So I was in a hotel room in, in Buenos Aires with a ledger, like making sure that we had everything ready, that there was enough bat liquidity on Solana to like get people to do the mint and it worked and it minted out. And so we're actually doing our sage burns. Uh, we just started a sage burn um, a couple weeks ago where you can get the three NFTs together and get like the sage. But, you know, again, what we're looking for with BAT is to get it multi-chain, have more utility and do more things with BAT on Solana specifically. Also, I will never speak for engineers, but we're projecting that in Q1, um, we'll have on-chain settlement done. So with BAT, which means, you know, Brave Rewards, uh, which is quite a large part of the reason why Brave is so popular in the crypto sphere is because, you know, the idea for being paid for your attention, it, it's a new dynamic. It's a new paradigm, really. And it's only available with crypto. Like the, the crypto made it possible. Now what you're going to be able to do is that, you know, previously you had to go through one of our partners, um, either like um, Gemini or Uphold. Uh, we have one in ZPay in India now to go through to opt in the Brave Rewards. Um, because again, user first, you opt in. Like we don't force anything on anybody. But yeah. if you want to earn for your attention, you can do it on Brave. So what we're excited to say is that probably in Q1, we're aiming for Q1. Development's been very good. We're going to have that on-chain settlement for Solana, which means that you can view ads on Brave and then settle that on onto a self-custody wallet in Solana. So wrap that. We have wrap that. It's through Portal. But we've gone through this whole thing. with the We're, <laughs> we're going to get the same. But either way, you'll be able to do the, to settle that and then participate in different things. Like there are a couple of liquidity pools right now that, that feature bad. You know, there's, there's some on Orca, some on Bonk Swap, but we're going to be doing more stuff with NFTs. We're also excited that creators are going to have the ability now to receive tips in bat or soul. Like we're integrating all of this. And so is, is that where, uh, like I've done this before where it's either YouTube channels or I think even websites as well. Like you click the brave icon and then you're able to tip creators and maybe just take a step back about mm -hmm. kind of why like bat exists as well is it's a way to reward, uh, you know, incentivize people. Hey, you want to watch ads? We can get paid for it. Or, Hey, you want to tip directly the creators, which you like, which are doing good stuff. And we all know like people complaining, YouTubers have been complaining about demonetization and stuff for years now. Uh, so, hey, there's this alternate method out there. And, and Brave has literally like tens of millions of, of active users, way more than anyone else in crypto ever. Um, <laughs> like in terms of like actual like eyes on a product. So yeah, I, I guess the Solana linkage there of hey, if I'm settling a payment of $3.26, I don't want to be paying 20 bucks to settle it on another chain, right? So maybe the Solana sort of the, the cost advantages there maybe make sense for a lot of creators and, and people that are, you know, looking to take settlements in bat. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it creates an ecosystem. What we're really trying to do, like people don't forget, like I, I began Brave on the ad side, right? So I would sell ads. And 70% of that advertising revenue goes back to the users in form of that. And right, so now you can envision like a full ecosystem that's funded with attention, right? We have, you know, in Brave Creators, we have a large number of creators on YouTube. You could tip on YouTube, you could tip on GitHub. I used to always say like Wikipedia, right? So Wikipedia, so you go and they always ask for money. You know, you can do an auto contribute of a couple bat and like that would generate a bunch of users. Now, the system is now evolving, which I think originally Brave did get some criticism from, you know, purists saying like, why do I have to go through a KYC? Why do I have to go to custodian? You know, um, and this new evolution allows people to, you know, settle with a wallet. How it's going to work is we're, gonna, we're doing a, a phased out launch where, you know, if you are selected for the initial pilot, you're going to get a notification on Brave that your wallet address has been connected and you can go through. And so that's how we're going to do it. So it's in, it's in motion. Um, and so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Um, it's been, it's been that, working, we've been working hard towards it. That's literally the final ball. Like being able to not have to, you know, sign up with another partner. I know that was a lot of contention for a long time, but to be able to what press a button and then I just get coins in my wallet, like that's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that. Yeah. I mean, nor can we, I mean, for example, like given the previous model, like there was no geo ability in Germany, like mm. just and Germany is quite a large market for us in terms of user base. Uh, they were never able to do so. Mm. Now they can unlocks Germany. I mean, Latam, forget about it, bro. Now this is going to be like, 
a huge thing. Like you can't onboard the next billion people without with it being even a dollar transaction or anything or having bridging. Like it just it just doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. You need something as cost effective and fast as Solana, right? This is just the bottom line. And I think that with Brave's positioning, you know, like fifteen percent of our user base is in Latam, right? So that means like one language from the Rio Grande down to Patagonia. Except for Brazil, they're their own beast. But like we talk to them, <laughs> we talk about them too. But the bottom line is like now you suddenly have the ability, like you know, advertisers in those countries can reach these audiences, not just exchanges, but non crypto advertisers. And then my pie in the sky would be earn bat, right? And then pay your cell phone bill with that. Like, yeah, I think that right there, it's like oh, I watch some ads, non intrusive ads, right? They're just you know you you get paid if they come into your attention. Uh, you don't have to click to do anything. It's just there and you get paid. I mean, dude, like that's just, it's a new paradigm that we're pushing. And, you know, we've, it's been five years, but, you know, it's, it's growing and we're super excited about this next iteration. Amazing. So Latam's a, an interesting market for you guys, I guess. Where's your focus at the moment or, or what are you most excited about? Maybe geographical regions or I know the tech is you're always in Solana, you're at every break point and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but what are you, I guess, excited for? 2024, we're entering another bull cycle. Solana's doing really well. Everyone's pumped again. Uh, we've got new things launching with Brave and Bat. Like, What's something that you're really excited about this time around? I mean, honestly, just getting the vibes back and the community back and like the yeah. conferences and getting everybody because, you know, I've been on the crypto traveling circus now for a number of years. That's and what it is, circus, by the way. That's a, correct. Yeah, that's it, correct terminology. <laughs> we're all the same people going to the yeah. same conferences. And it's just, Talking about you know, we might. On a JPEG thing and yeah, <laughs> we clown. might miss some, we might go, but, you know, I remember, that I, I won't say which, but I went to a conference. And for the first time, I was like, damn, this is a bear market. You know, the tourists are gone. And, and in some sense, like, it's good for, you know, you, you don't build relationships like the one you and I have, like, just being a tourist. Like, no, we're, I'm in it. Like, we're in it. But I'm looking forward to because I think with every bull market, you know, think about crypto, it passes the sniff test. It makes sense. And every single time we get more attention from users that are, again, I think those people don't dis- take this to account are getting older, mm. right? So the younger ones from the bear market are now coming up and like, well, I can do this crypto thing and, you know, they're going to start getting involved. And so every single thing, because it makes sense, man. You know, people in the United States, people such as yourself or like other people I've met who have an international experience, it makes sense, man. You just yeah. know. Yeah. A lot of the barriers, like you mentioned Latin before and people getting paid, like imagine if you were to offer a global service for something, right? And you need to pay people in multiple countries all over the place. It's so hard. It literally doesn't exist. Like if I want to pay someone with one system and I want it to work the same in Ecuador as it does in Zambia, there isn't anything that works, just one system that works everywhere. And I think that's one of the the key things with crypto and, and being able to just you guys have a business model that can just work everywhere. Boom. Yeah. Just you just use the browser and you have a wallet and it's done. So it actually, I think that's a huge unlock as well for a lot of people in a lot of different regions of the world being able to buy and sell, monetize their products, whatever they want to do, just way easier um, because you just don't have these it's just annoying, silly problems from like the 1980s that don't need to exist anymore. Like I just want to pay someone $3.60 in another country somewhere in the world and I don't want to have to sign up to 4 million different things and have to pay $50 in fees. Like, that's just dumb. Yeah. One of the benefits now with the browser, like we are a browser, like there's a reason why we began with the browser, like Brave, like people ask, what is Brave? Well, it's a, a suite of privacy-based products, right? The reason mm-hmm. why we spoke, the browser is so important is because we have a certain amount of control on our, our user's experience. And so you're able to use a browser, enjoy an ad-free experience, tracker-free experience, you know, let's say YouTube without ads, but in addition to that, the wallet itself, you remember your browser can store your credit card information. It can securely store your credit card information. Like one thing about Brave Wallet, it's fully open source. Don't get me wrong. I'm not apt enough to know how to audit something, but I do know that if we were trying to pull something, there are people who are waiting to call people out on these things. And so Brave Wallet is, is fully transparent with that. And that's a really important matter. In mainnet, I did a, I did a presentation on, you know, the case for the browser wallet, right? We have to be, you know, obviously it's not just Brave Wallet, but the browser wallet. 
wallet because the browser is a, is almost an operating system within an operating system. And so the Brave wallet has the potential to like really allow for just what you're talking about, payments. You know, there's a funny story I have that's actually the one thing that opened my mind on crypto. I got married in 2010 and my wife's from Costa Rica, as I said, and I was getting married down there and I was wiring money from my bank account in the United States to my bank account in Costa Rica, it got rejected four times. <laughs> yeah, well, I almost, lo- it was for the deposit for like the reception. Yeah. I almost lost it. My mom had to come down with like cash for the way, like the woman like did us a favor and like she believed us. I'm like, look, man, I don't understand. <laughs> and it was my passport number, my so- crypto yeah. solves this. Yeah. And so that's what really like, you know, if you have any experience internationally working with any kind of institutions that you're like, crypto needs to happen. This is why I see Argentina blowing up right now, Brazil blowing up. And if you imagine the unlock of, and I always say this for Latin America, yes, we're region. Like I'm sincerely like excited. The reason why I'm so excited about Latin America is because, you know, Latin America has been, you know, they're united by language. And so you have a linguistic block that for the first time can transfer not only information, but now value digitally without the need of all these corrupt governments taking their piece. Dude, that's going to create like an economic block that's going to be formidable in the next 20 years, I believe. Like that, that's my belief on it. That's why you know, I think what Bukele is doing in El Salvador is interesting, but now you have Millet in Argentina. Like things are going to start popping up, man. And this is what I'm most excited about is the concept of this digital nation state, where essentially if you derive your income from the digital nation state, this thing up here, and you're, you, you're not dependent on the local geography of which you find yourself in, okay, yeah, the government could suck and you could have various problems, that sort of thing. But if your income is derived from magical internet money from a digital nation state where that's where your your users, your products are and that sort of stuff, you're on the same playing field as anyone else. It's a efficient, you know, optimized playing model. Uh, you can now, like in the case of Latin America, okay, cool. Now you've got so many countries. What is it, 600 million speakers or billion? Yeah, it's probably. the second most spoken language in the world after Mandarin. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Like huge, right? So it, it that's now your user base, right? And and it doesn't matter like where you happen to be. And and I saw this first when I had a offshore tech team in my first startup in Ukraine, right? And at the time, Ukraine, look, it's not a place that you want to export from because customs officials were corrupt or whatever and take a fee and it takes slow and blah, blah, blah. But it's like Ukraine got really big on like digital outsourcing and basically coding and devs because you can export that by pressing a button. And boom, yeah. there's, there's no customs officials that are going to take their cut, you know, to upload to, to GitHub. So it's like, that's, as you say, it's a huge unlock and payments are a, a huge portion of that. And having a common infrastructure for people to talk to each other through like a browser, I think is uh, is also really important. I, I think Brave is like fully open source as well, right? The entire browser. It is. Yeah, it is. You can poke around, man. You guys can look, you can see what's going on. I mean, and, you know, for example, like we have um, Bitcoin support coming. We have Zcash support coming. From, like We are bringing everything under one umbrella. That's the goal, right? Because there's so much exciting stuff happening, so much. And like, you know, I unfortunately couldn't make it to Amsterdam for the network state conference prior, but I was going to try to go. Did you go to that? I, I didn't know, but I sort of like asked a whole bunch of my friends who were come outside during the breaks to tell me what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I read the network state. I'm a fan of biology. I think, you know, he has a lot of interesting views on these things. And because again, like what you just said, like for me, like this linguistic block. You know, like talk about corrupt officials and custom. Imagine we have a couple of contractors, one one of which lives in Costa Rica, one lives in Colombia. Like, again, I just lived in Costa Rica in the past. Like I moved there when I was in my 20s. And, you know, if I could earn dollars uh, or earn like magical Internet money and just live there and like on like a farm with like Starlink and just, you know, the weather like that, I'm. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you know, like living the dream. That's it, man. And just like go in and like get my airdrops and just yeah. like, you know, do, just like that is, I, that's the old man that I want to be, yeah. be friend. <laughs> you know, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's the joke I have with my, uh, with my friends, uh, especially in Brave that like down in Latin America, they call you Don, I'm Don Carlos because of that. <laughs> like I want to be the old man on the hill, like in a, in a Guayabera, like just like with my ledger. <laughs> Dude, I will do that. that. That sounds like a plan, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, absolutely. Man. You love it. It's, it's, it's going to be fun. So like Latin America, Southeast Asia, we have a growing a South Sub-Saharan African community. Like uh, we have community calls every week. Anybody can chime in. We want to grow more. 
Um, like I said, our Spanish language team is kind of small, but we're, we're, we're trying to grow it. Um, we're, we're trying to grow across. I mean, we have 65 million users worldwide. We want them. They should. Everyone deserves privacy. Everyone deserves a quality experience browsing the internet. And, you know, browsers aren't going anywhere, man. They're sticky. They're like, they, yep. it's the, no matter what people say, like, that's not, no, nope, browser's there. And, like, you know, once you see, like, with Brave, it allows you to enjoy a lot of the same stuff, but with the added protection. And that's going to become more and more important as the future goes on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're recording this now. It's uh, it's a new year. I guess, do you have any maybe learnings from last year or sort of we were emerging out of a bear market period? It had been like that for, for two years or whatever since Sam blew everything up or a little bit prior to that, I guess. But like, I think we're now seeing a lot of the communities returning. What was sort of the main takeaway or were you guys getting things in place for when the bull market returns. I mean, we at Step were trying to think that way, but like, how were you thinking over the last sort of couple of years where sort of number went down and then, you know, number of people engaged also goes down, but then, hey, everything comes roaring back now. I mean, one of the benefits of Brave not being solely a Web3 company, like it's a Web3 adjacent, I like to say company, but, you know, we kept building. We shipped things with our browser. We shipped with our wallet. We improved the wallet. We got the wallet 2.0 came out. You know, like we have a multi-chain NFT gallery. Swaps have been native and brave wallet through Jupiter for Solana since, you know, forever now. Um, so like yeah. if you, if you swapped in brave wallet, I would check on the Jupiter airdrop checker <laughs> because you've used it. But and so, you know, it's cliche that like the bear market is for builders, but it's the truth because mm. only the builders are going to be the ones that are going to be really believe this stuff because we're not tourists. Like we're not just like here for the shiny, like the money's great, but you know, it's, it, it really is the tech. Like people joke about that all the time. The tech is super important. And, you know, like I got to scoop up NFT projects and make new friends and just like all the stuff that we were doing is like gearing up now for, for the bull market because people are going to want to experiment with new chains. People are going to experiment on Solana. Again, it's, they know the oh, already. Here's the wallet done. Ready good yeah. to go. They don't have to worry about getting a spoofed wallet on a Google ad. They just use Brave Search. They don't have to worry about that either. They could just do it all in the browser, man. Just all at home, protected, and that's like really what we want to make sure happens for 2024 and beyond. And and I really like the terminology, sort of Web three adjacent, is what you said, right? And I would put Brave in kind of a similar bucket to say like Helium, or on what they're doing. Like Helium, okay, cool. They're like a uh, AT and T mobile carrier, whatever. Or I think they did a thing with T Mobile recently. Yeah. But like, so they're a mobile carrier, and you get data through them, and that sort of thing. They also are doing a lot of their infrastructure and stuff on Solana you know, through their their tokenomics and that sort of thing. But so they're not a Web3 company, but they're actually like onboarding users and getting people using Web3 stuff. And I would put Brave in exactly the same bucket where it's like, you guys, you're not a crypto company per se, like you're focused on having a privacy focused browser, but crypto adjacent where crypto is like an enabler for a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool when people are, are talking about use cases. I hate the question of people all the time like, oh, bro, Oh, uh, when are we going to buy a coffee with crypto? I can't see it at my coffee shop. So, okay, number one, there are coffee shops that take crypto. Like, by the way, I bought a house in crypto, like got it furnished in crypto. Like there's mm-hmm. people, it just depends on the country as well. So like, okay, there's lots of countries out there and there's lots of, it's like, there's also all of these other things that you can do in crypto, right? So it's like, okay, cool. Like maybe you're, you know, a YouTube creator or something and getting paid by that or, or whatever. And, and yeah. cool. like, that's how, you, that's how you're using crypto. So it's like, there's a lot of things which maybe people aren't seeing in their everyday life, which are sort of seeping in to society now with with crypto and the browsers are pretty important, you know, part of that. But yeah, I, it's really cool. I'm just sort of throwing it out there. Like it's cool to see non crypto focused use cases, but they're actually also driving crypto at the same time. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I I, I think that as we really start to move forward and crypto will become more and more just the layers will get more and more harder to see. And like, you know, everything's going to be just there yeah, and usable in a way that people talk about, like, you know, it's cliche. I also talk about email and stuff like that. You don't have to know about, and just, look, our founder is OGs of OGs, you know, like I have a, there's, a, there's a book behind me about like how the internet happened and Netscape. Like, you know, I, I, one thing about Brave is like, we have some of the only team members in the world that have built and brought, three browsers to market, you know, it was, is Netscape, Mozilla, Firefox, and then now Brave. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, yeah. <laughs> there, there's some pedigree there that it's more, it's not just magical internet money, it's legitimate uses and like 
application for technology. Yeah. Right. And so it's, uh, it, it's going to be exciting to see like how crypto continues to be evolved and really not being called crypto also. Like that's, that's just for us, you know, it's like for me, Twitter, like, is there a Twitter about crypto Twitter? Cause I am not aware of it. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. All, all Twitter is the only thing that I have with crypto, and like that, there's nothing else. I don't follow anything else on Twitter. So yeah, you know. exactly. Hey, why would you? Like <laughs> crypto Twitter has got everyone's an expert every five days about something, right? So we're good. And I think that also this is fun, man. Like talking to you, like all this stuff is fun. Like if you keep it for fun, like you can get serious. People are trading and investing, but like for me, like what drives me, like what drove me to do the Generate Eight was fun. What what drove me to like Mint Grim Syndicate was fun to like mess around with different DeFi stuff. Like, I'll try that. Like, hey, what's a Gito? I'll stake some stuff there for no reason. Well, that worked out. Oh, <laughs> you know? Like, like that, that was, that was like, oh, okay. Like, I'm still waiting. I have stuff on Jupiter. Oh, that worked out. Yeah. You know? I think people need to be Web3 adjacent also. Like, they need yeah. to understand, like, it's like, you know, follow your curiosity and like, I always tell everybody, don't, you say, don't invest what you don't want to lose. But like, also play with things and like, you might lose it, but you know, you're learning so like that has been my I've stumbled I'm stumbling forward in my crypto journey like and I'm gonna continue so, uh, to stumble and it's working out <laughs> you know it's like half of the I always say like half of the game is just turning up like and mm-hmm. and that people are like oh how do I do airdrops so like, bro just like use the stuff then and like give it a go that's how you do well but so okay so lot coming in in 2024 we've got new settlement mechanisms we've got Solana focus um, you know we've got a lot happening with with BAT. Uh, where should people go to find out more? Are there any places, you know, community links or blogs or where should people go to find out more about how they can be involved in the in the Brave community? Well, there's multiple ways, but I mean, Brave.com is obviously the first one to download a Brave. If you're not using it, you should. Um, just give it a try. Uh, you know, like we, we want users to, to have a good ex- private experience. Two, um, I'm going to shout out, we have a back community call every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., um, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, there we have, uh, you know, Luke and Jenny and the rest of our team like kind of give updates for the community. We have our bat Discord. I mean, I can share all the links with you as well as there. And then also Twitter. One thing I love about Brave, and this comes out from like old school Netscape days, is like Brendan himself is available on Twitter. Like if you have any kind of like questions or concerns or anything about Brave, like ping Brendan because he'll respond to you. And then he might also tag me or anybody else on the team that might help with those things. So, yeah. you know, we, we'll make sure that we're in front. Like we're here for our community, all 65 million users of them. Absolutely. And, and we'll also put the links to all of that as well, as well as the picture from our first breakpoint <laughs> of all of us so, together. So if, if I can just like put this out from the first breakpoint, you know, just Let's like the go. proof, I got these, I got these, the, I got this. I mean, two of them. And then I actually have this hanging here and I've had it hanging here. It's from my monk, monkey dow thing oh, from yeah, that part. Right. Yeah. Remember, remember how cool these were? Yeah. This was like the best thing that they were like, everyone, you know, recognize everybody they should do this again. So shout out to yeah. Nam and the, and the SMB team, man. They, they were great. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Look, that's awesome. These guys are, are OGs. Definitely go and check them out. Uh, the stuff that you guys are doing with, uh, with BAT and rewarding creators all over the world and, getting involved in Solana since a very long time. So that that's all great to see. We'll put the links. Carlos, great to have you on the podcast. As always, welcome back anytime you want. And uh, Thanks, yeah, have a great Appreciate rest of the day. It, Appreciate it, man. You too. Good talking, George. Cheers. 